Welcome to the WAN Show, ladies and gentlemen. We got a fantastic show lined up for you today. And a lot of great topics, including what happened to my hair. Yeah. 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 I will say this much. There's a channel super fun. I've heard. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be talking about that. We're also going to uh. be talking about YouTube's new features to combat comment spam. It turns out they care. Or at least they care a little. <laughs> We're going to dig into it. What else we got? Uh, I, I'm scrolling. Through. It looks like the dock is still uh, under construction, uh, but we are we are working on this it. This one's pretty good. Well, oh, well, I turned the text yellow instead of highlighting at. it. So uh, there's a, a Google engineer explains why business versus non-business G Suite accounts work the way that they do. In uh, which is to say that the business ones, the paid ones, don't work. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm it's very interested to hear about that. It's pretty much what you'd expect but it's interesting to hear it like from someone that actually works there you know like it's that's good that's helpful that's nice um i'm not gonna do this one where is it there it is <laughs> oh, oh yeah intel's block scale crypto miner is out early but also late Ugh. yep bad timing intel let's go ahead and roll that intro that seems to be a theme for them lately The show was brought to you today by Reloptics, Squarespace, and Secret Lab. Let's jump right into what I know is on everyone's mind first and foremost. What the heck happened to my hair? Yeah. Do you like my haircut? Do you no. like the new Well, I'm glad I can I count on you for your like, forthrightness I don't and honesty. Think it, uh, always. I don't <laughs> think it's like horrible but i think it's <laughs> a clear definite absolute downgrade uh i mean and being a downgrade over doing nothing to no, no, it no, see, for like four months see but i don't pretty rough i don't necessarily agree with that because there's a lot of different like men's hairstyles that you can get away with that are like attractive and are actually genuinely good that I take not be drinking that water. take very little maintenance yes tell me and more. you found it I feel like you had hit your like apex. You had figured out your beard. Your beard was good. Now it's like smaller. I think. I think you trimmed. Did you trim the beard back? Well, I didn't. Oh, oh he did that too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look as good. Uh, <laughs> so I feel like you had figured that out, and then that's downgraded. And I feel like you had figured the hair out because you don't like doing tons of maintenance with your hair. No, I don't. So you had something that worked really well and it was a package and it was good and you were doing good. <laughs> so you're saying basically And now it looks like someone I who peaked like and I'm on the down I'm on the yes. down slope. Yeah. I'm on the down slope. Now it looks like you like saw someone else's haircut that worked really well for them and you were like, I'm gonna take exactly that, even though it doesn't work for me. Okay, do you know what the video head. was? Because it a sounds clue. like you know what the video was. I actually don't. Dennis went to Yvonne and asked her for a reference picture. The reference picture she chose was uh, Chris Hemsworth, like Thor, Chris Hemsworth, sure. but with like the, you know, like, like this one, you know, oh, sorry, I swept it the wrong way. It doesn't matter. The point is it's supposed to go up a bit at the very least. Okay. She picked that. Dennis then had three hours of professional instruction okay. from a uh, top tier hairdresser on dummies and everything, l learning to use all the tools to learn how to give that haircut. Then he had one hour to execute that haircut, including beard trim on me. And obviously this is gonna be a bit of a spoiler for you WAN show viewers, but I promise you the journey is just as much fun as the destination, <laughs> if not more so, because there were some additional challenges, some curveballs that I threw into Dennis as part of the whole challenge. But I will say this, I have often gone to the hairdresser and not really understood why they do things the way that they do. Do you, do you get it now? Is that the direction you're No. 
Oh. I still don't get it. <laughs> okay. Because Dennis did things that were like proper the way that a hairdresser would do it. Like, for example, do you use just like a guard and a trimmer and a, and a shaver to trim your beard? Yeah. Okay. According to the hairdresser, you should never go against the grain. You always go with the grain. So... Been doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you, you can't get certain because it just flattens it Well, up. let's talk about that. Okay. When I trim my beard, which I, I think I've got down to pretty much a science at this point. I think it's point, been pretty good. It takes me about 110 seconds. <laughs> like, it actually takes me pretty much no time. You have time. your guard length figured out. Yeah. And you just whip it's through number it. four pretty much across the board i go a little easy here because i have like kind of a thin spot to be right clear here. neither of us i'm assuming not exactly masters of beards oh no so not like, at all T take this for the yeah, don't take for the complete ignorant nonsense that it is yeah, okay yeah yeah but i just grab a number four i just go nye, 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 grab everything that everything that it will cut you know, kind of blend a little bit here. Try not to take off too much in that kind of weak spot right there. And then I take off the guard. I fix up the cheeks. And then I just kind of go, like, ah. I go, nah, nah, and then I'm done. It actually takes me less than two minutes. Meanwhile, Dennis, following the, the proper way of doing it, where you go down, managed to get as low as a number one Whoa. without taking pretty much anything off and then he goes and he starts cutting freehand around the mustache which was terrifying oh like no guard <laughs> so i do well, that well no guard but not like like i rest against my lip because it won't cut it yeah so i i like use the lip as a as a as a guide no i mean freehand like 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 a pencil just like oh like holding my head and going like one slip and i'm looking like I got like a bear spot here. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was madness. Can I, can I see the back of your head? And can you take the headphones off yeah, and like yeah. just turn a little I'll, bit? I'll ditch the headphones out. How do I look? Okay. Okay. I need to. Yeah. Wow. I okay. spent half an hour on this fade. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't know, because I know nothing about hair. But like, it doesn't really seem like it's blended properly, because um, like you can see the layers, which I don't think is like what's supposed to happen. Yeah, I don't um, think so. I don't know. You've got some stuff going on back here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't think Dennis was familiar with the concept of a cowlick, which was interesting. Okay. Yeah. And he kept saying, "Oh, your hair is so thin." And I'm like, yeah, Dennis, I'm not Asian. I don't have like coarse hair. I, it, yeah, it's thin. Oh, it's so curly. I'm like, okay, A, it's not that curly. I've got a bit of a wave, but it's not curly. And like, yes, I, yes, I have, I have white guy hair. <laughs> what, what do you want from me? So that, that's sort of what I was talking about, though, is like it doesn't look like it was cut for you. Which right. might might be the problem with the the like the source material or whatever, but like <laughs> Honestly, the second I saw you, because I, I ran into him in the stairwell earlier today, and the second I saw you, I was just like, huh. <laughs> it's just like more weird than anything, because it just doesn't, I don't, personally, I don't think it suits you. This is but. great. Twitch chat. Twitch chat be like, wow, Linus, balding AF. Bald spot above the right ear. No, no, no. That would be Dennis's hand to work. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what is this? Oh, no, no, that's just, okay, okay, there we go. Yeah. So yes, some hairline receding, but no, that's not just like a bald spot. That's just, well, he didn't really take any length off. That too, it's really long. It's really like the hair on the top of his head, really long. But also like down the back, <laughs> like there's hair that's really long down I the know, back. He, well, he barely touched the top. <laughs> he spent half an hour of his time on this fade that is extremely uneven. Like it goes from nothing to hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then probably another 10 minutes on the beard. So the poll on float plane is showing 72% no. 72% or is the hair good? do not like the hair. Here, I'll share my screen with you guys. Here's a, we have a new polling system on float plane. Freaking amazing. Massive shout out float plane team for putting that together for Way us. Way easier to generate polls now. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> I don't, are you going to leave it? I have to. 
That's part of the like. I mean, that's them's, the thing. Them's the rules. You can't have stakes. See, I always talk to I always talk to people internally about this. I hate fakeness. I I hate fake reactions and fake pranks. I just I just didn't know just, like okay you have to hold it for the rest of the week the, or like what the fakeness that is online content in general. Oh, I was constantly, yeah. I was doom scrolling on Facebook in the middle of the night like I don't know it must have been a couple of months ago. At That's got to be one of the worst things to doom scroll on. Pretty much, I came across this <laughs> video that's like she surprised her her. She she surprised her husband with a visit from military duty or something, and and it's this thing that that she's wearing like a, like an old man like a rubber mask and like dressed up as someone else entirely and he's a doctor and he's like sitting working at his computer and she manages to completely strip down her costume to like her her army while fatigues he's working while he's supposedly working and not noticing any of this and I'm sitting this has like. 20 million views of course yeah. like just just and i'm sitting here going i was watching it as part of like i continued watching it i i figured out it was fake immediately but i was continuing watching it just to kind of see what are people watching you know reading the comments right there's some people where they're con like commenting like they're playing along obviously but there's a lot where you look at it and you go no Unironically, you you don't realize that this is just a complete setup. I don't I don't get it. Anyway, I refuse. I refuse to participate in it. So a big part of the the challenge, I think, for Channel Super Fun for me is that the stakes, like the the scale of stakes for you know fun like skit or prank or challenge videos on YouTube has been thrown so far out of whack by both people who are just actually wild and willing to go to just unbelievable extremes for their content and people who fake the consequences right yeah so as a you know actual company with an employee agreement and work safe policies we, we can't really like we can't really compete but what we can do is we can be genuine about what we do. Yeah. And so from my point of view, unless I actually had to live with the haircut for some substantial period of time, so, but there's no stakes. There's no there's no risk. And if there's no risk, there's no tension. And there's but no what's, tension, there's what's no the content. substantial period of time? So like how, how long? Are at least talking? a few weeks before I touch weeks. it up. Yeah. Because I like, are you worried about a decrease in, in video views? Should you use old pictures of you as what thumbnail the shots what did you just say to me <laughs> so i think your genuine you know your appeal may have gone down <laughs> <laughs> i have i ever told you the story about okay. how i went from one hairdresser to another hairdresser because the first one was so bad i don't think so it sounds like a really compelling tale though please do i share. i i decided like oh i'll i'll go to like a nice hairdresser cuz oh, okay. i've i've always gone to like just really like very cheap ones so I was like i'll go to a really nice hairdresser so i went there they did the haircut i wasn't really super i was already like Meh, yeah whatever okay. but i realized as i was walking out that they never did the mirror thing so you can see the back of your head and as i was getting in the car i just brushed the back of my head and realized that she did literally nothing <laughs> like it was super long so i just drove to my previous hairdresser and i was like yeah i'm not gonna like explain this but if you can like <laughs> fix what happened that would be awesome <laughs> that was sweet as part of this video the hairdresser that trained dennis actually said that whatever he screwed up i could go in and she would fix it but like I said, yeah, you gotta you gotta live with it for a certain amount of time for sure. Yes, yeah. I I think two to three weeks is probably the right amount of time for me to have emo Linus videos going up. <laughs> it's just so long. <laughs> it's very long. <laughs> it's very long. You're I think, being very mean though, I by the way. <laughs> and I think the community's with me here. I don't know how to post polls, but I'm sure someone oh. will post it for me. Oh, you can't do. You need the main screen. Oh, okay. Main screen, turn on. Uh, no. Oh, okay. Okay. Luke too mean. Yes. I got, I got roasted. If, if this situation was swapped, you'd be going in just as hard, if not harder. No way. Yes, you no absolutely way. I would. I have never gone this hard at you about anything. And that is, that is the God's honest truth. <laughs> I don't believe that at all. 
I'm gonna vote no on this. Poll. You're gonna vote no. <laughs> yes. Okay, Flow Plane, whose Let's side go. are you on here? Probably mine. Clearly, Luke's. He's a rude, mean guy, and you guys are really not giving me the support that I feel that I deserve. Yeah, you know what? I don't even think he's a rude, mean guy. I think he's a nice guy who does rude, mean things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed, float plane. That's funny. Okay, but enough with the uh, enough with the the hair. Let's talk about YouTube's new feature to combat comment spam. We talked about this as recently as last week. We did a dedicated video about it when Theo Joe released his tool that would basically do YouTube's job for them through API calls to check comments, scan them for obvious spam like tap to masturbate my <laughs> like that kind of stuff well like <laughs> honestly honestly yeah they, they're they're pretty blatant they're 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 they're, they're right there they're they're in there you yeah. know they got the just woo oh yeah and they got the the pornographic profile pictures and everything like it just Honestly, it doesn't seem it's either it's either that spectrum or it's the 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 the, the fake channels like, oh, Linus Tech Tips is doing a giveaway for whatever. Yeah, Mr. Beast is doing Telegram. a giveaway for whatever. Contact yeah. me on WhatsApp. And the yeah. thing is, guys, you got to understand, they wouldn't be doing it if it doesn't work. And it's not constructive to blame the victim here. We have to blame the scammers, first and foremost. And then second, since you're not going to get the scammers to stop by just asking nicely, you've got to blame the platform because... It, it didn't seem that complicated. No offense. Theo Joe, nice guy. Do I think he's a world-class software developer? No. By his own admission, yeah. he's a hobbyist who taught himself how to... Make a really cool tool. Make this tool. Yeah. Like, he's an amateur, guys. Literally, by the definition, I'm not trying to throw shade, but he's an amateur. And he was able to create a filter just by just... Just looking at the comments. Caring you enough. Know, I've had YouTube representatives ask me, oh, can you send examples? No, I can't send f***ing examples. They're everywhere. Go on a video. You should have just linked them, YouTube.com. Well, yeah, right? Because <laughs> they're, they're literally everywhere. It's been so frustrating, you know? Well, say bar, I'll... masturbate's not a bad word. It's the correct term, okay? <laughs> For pleasuring yourself. It's not a bad word. I'll, I'll try to read the Sorry, comments. They were asking under... why I didn't beep it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'll try to read the comments under Wan Show, and I'll see someone say something, and I'll be, and I'll see a reply, and I'll be like, oh, I'm actually interested to see like what other people think about this statement, and I click view reply, and it's like, go to my Telegram. It's like, oh my god. Come claim your giveaway. All you have to do is send me eighty dollars for shipping. I mean, they must have been making bank. The point is, it's been going on for so long that. I mean, I understand. I, I felt this way myself. I understand the community's frustration and the community sentiment that YouTube clearly just doesn't care. I mean, the last conversation that I had with YouTube about this was, look, guys, at this point, you guys need to do what you do and go way too far for a solution and work your way backwards rather than trying to implement quarter measures or half measures to try to stop the bleeding. You need to just get that. Is it tourniquet? Tourniquet? I guess tourniquet? it depends on to stop depends bleeding? on the length. Tourniquet. Would it in French? Would it be tourniquet? I don't know. Q U E T. I think, I think tourniquet. En français. Oh, pronunciation. I yeah, have no idea. Yeah, I don't idea. know. Anyway, don't anyway, know. tourniquet. You need to just get that thing on that leg that is clearly off. <laughs> cinch it. Get the blood to stop. Like the suggestion I gave them was like, look. You guys need to stop allowing anything other than official language alpha numeric characters. That's it. That's it. No special characters. Just block it all. Usernames, message contents, all of it. Figure out your shit and then start to slowly bring it back because this is clearly costing people a lot I don't of even know. money. I might have an unpopular opinion here, but I don't even know if you need to bring it back from Why there. do you need special characters in the comments? Yeah. 
I'm not trying to. I'm not as trying to. As long as there are no languages your, yeah. that are that are screwed with. No, exactly. But I'm there's not... there's a huge amount of characters that are essentially only used for fooling people. Exactly, only used for exploits or abuse. Like, oh, this this looks like an eye, but it's not an eye. It's some other thing or or whatever else. Like, there's there's tons of that stuff. So, I don't know. I just I I can't. Uh... Thorium says alphanumeric would lock out other languages. Sorry, I, I'm I'm using the term. When, that's why I specifically said like what you need for languages. I mean they're alpha characters, whatever those yeah. would be. Now I know that there could be some challenges associated with that. Like I don't know much about well, what's involved in everything. typing in simplified or traditional Chinese, for example. So there could be some misleading characters that you absolutely do need to that type you in have those, to have. Yeah, there yeah, there definitely would be. Yeah. But there are also ones that I really just don't think you need that badly. Yeah. 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 Oh, turn to K in French. Don't pronounce the T. All right. So there you go. Got it. Sure. Anyway, they finally have a response. The talking points from Adam here are funny. No, we are not running a giveaway, and we certainly aren't doing it through Telegram. Yes, thank you, Adam, for that. YouTube has finally announced some updates to combat the spam and impersonation that has been rampant in the video comments section. The updates listed are that they are no longer allowing channels to hide subscriber counts. This is supposedly to make impersonation more difficult. As uh, much as I like the attempt, and I do agree with what you were saying about how they need to go too far the first time, I don't think this is going to make pretty much any difference at all well let's get through the rest of the changes sure. yeah. okay uh they are improving comment uh creator comment moderation in the youtube studio uh increased strictness in the held for review tab is now available to all creators so it's a moderation level a new moderation level i have still <laughs> seen significant spam creep through we have had access to that feature for some weeks oh, okay yeah and they are limiting the type and frequency of special characters in channel names, removing characters that can be easily misread for other letters from the allowed character set. For example, uh, here, I'm just going to share the doc here with you guys for a second. Whoop. This is no longer allowed. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> That's a sort of, that's a YouTube of sorts. <laughs> Welcome to my video site. Yen, ooh, whatever that T is, oob. <laughs> YouTube will then continue monitoring the situation and investigating other ways to remove spam. Okay, I agree with you. I don't think this goes far enough. I don't understand why they don't just remove the special characters also from like body text. Yeah, why? I don't I You don't know, know it's if... a problem. So just block it. Yeah, just the channel name being special characters is probably not enough. Um, there's also a lot of like, to use Mr. Beast as an example, there's a lot of, uh, channels that he has that are derivatives of Beast. Yep. I don't know what they are, but. Yep. So you could mislead someone by having like a Beast plays uh, with a Z beast instead of giveaways, with a Beast giveaways. Something like, yeah. Yeah. Beast prizes. That's exactly the sort of thing that these scammers literally spend their entire day brainstorming and coming if up we with we figure that out in a few seconds they'll figure out much better things and the thing you guys have got <laughs> to understand too is that these scam industries are not maybe what you think they are they're they're not just some you know person who can't get a job you know sitting alone in their basement coming up with clever scam there there are there are sizable enterprises dedicated with coming up Dedicated Massive to coming up with tens of hundreds of employees to to rip people off online, and the 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 really wild thing is that they can have employees that don't even realize that they work for scammers. They're just developers working on features, and they get a paycheck, and they might not even realize it. So these are these are sizable teams with significant resources. There is a anywhere where there's a lot of money, you can afford to hire talent. So there are actually talented people working on this stuff. And in YouTube's defense, it's a non-trivial problem to solve. And you have to find a balance between site usability and blocking scammers and spammers. The, the, yeah, I, I do think it's non-trivial because it's an arms race. Um, 
though like Theo Joe's thing did work very well. <laughs> so and there's and... there's things that could have been done uh, that were not super ultra high effort. You know what I mean? There's low hanging fruit solutions that were not implemented, and I don't honestly think that these measures are going to like solve it. I don't think hiding subscriber counts is going to solve it when I bet you a lot of people aren't doing that level of due diligence anyways, because I, if they were, they would obviously be able to tell it wasn't the same channel um, in, yeah. in, a, in a variety of other ways. Because if you're looking at subscriber count, there's you could look at the videos that are on the channel. Um, like there's there's other ways. And it's to do also that. I mean, you got to remember a huge part of scamming is social engineering, right? Yeah. Once you are once you have started a conversation with someone. You can talk your way through a lot of problems. Yeah. Uh, you could just say, yeah, we don't have any subscribers on this channel because it's just the one we use to contact people. Some low-level employee manages it instead of you, Jimmy himself, Mr. Beast. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I could see someone saying, oh, well, that sounds plausible sure. enough. Yeah. And it does. I don't think it goes far enough. The, uh, the increased strictness feature is really the one that needs to be good. Yeah, and it needs to be better. Like the rest of these are kind of whatever. Um, increased strictness needs to be good. It's clearly you're saying it's not it's working better. or not doing enough. It's it is better. better. Okay. But it's not solving it. We have it enabled across all of our channels now, and it is better, but it is not perfect. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see how fast you can find a spam comment on the most recent LDT upload. Mmm. That one might be a little challenging just because it is from yesterday. So we don't do they, upload on Friday. Do they like take a while to? Well, I also don't know if we're still running the Theo Joe script. Uh... If we are, that almost certainly would have found it. Oh, never mind. I found something already. Okay, I take it back. So here's how long it took me. I popped open the comments. Uh, video comments, I haven't responded. This filter is enabled by default. I don't know why. So I was scrolling down, looking. This is all 42 minutes ago. One of the things that YouTube employees have pointed out to me in the past is that right in the minutes after a video goes live, there can be a lot of spam because the bots will be triggered by a video going live and they will post all their crappy spam right in those first few minutes. And then they're, the thumbs up and thumbs down are ways that the community can help to moderate the comment section, making it so that those comments might still be there, but only a creator would normally see them because as a creator, the way that I consume comments is probably very different from the way that you would consume comments. I look at them in chronological order because I don't want to miss things and or I want to make sure, well, mostly I don't want to miss things. I want to see everything, not just what got the most upvotes. So I will look through the whole feed. So I will see all that crap but if I were to actually look at it in the public view, sorted by by best or whatever the the default sorting is, top, mm -hmm. I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't really see it personally. I just like the thumbs up and thumbs down to be public again, um, like they are on Reddit, which is, I mean, it's got its own toxicity, but at least has very little spam from my experience, except in very very like small threads on really obscure communities. You'll find spam there, but any reasonably moderated community, like human moderation just kind of seems to be the answer. Yeah. Anyway, the point is I'm on this video um, and this is from quite recent. We managed to have to go as far. Oh, uh, first of all, yeah, this definitely rest in peace, Technoblade. Oh, uh, yeah. did you see that? Have you watched the video? I did. It's heartbreaking. That's yeah. Have you seen the merch? I, I'm planning to buy myself the uh, limited edition, um, uh, the, 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 the two-sided one. I forget exactly what the graphics yeah, yeah. are. But I, was gonna I was thinking think about getting the GG Easy. Yeah. Uh, here we go. From three hours ago. This is a video that went up yesterday. Uh, here's a reply. So this is basically the Chief Tech whatever. Hello, fan. Telegram. Linus Tech Tips official. Thank you for watching. Congratulations. You've won a price. I wonder if that's an intentional typo because they've done it twice here and they've put a little emoji next to it of a gift. So it's amazing what the human brain can do when when you're reading. Like you can have the first, what is it? The first letter and the last letter correct and then everything else random and you will still be able to read the word like easily. It's pretty crazy. So, so stuff like that is almost certainly intentional because you will see this emoji 
gloss over it, probably not even notice that it's a typo, but that's probably how they're getting around this particular filter. And the thing is, I could go in, I could put in text filters, I could see this, I could go, okay, well, let's not allow the word prize, right, in our in our comments. But clearly, uh, YouTube, the fact that they're doing this means that YouTube is already responding to the word prize in comments. I can't block the word price, but I don't, I mean, Again, am I just being am I just hating on people's personal expression when I say I don't really understand why we need emojis? In, I in think YouTube emojis. Comments? I think emojis are fine. I don't think that really matters. I I but have do a, we need them. Uh, if it's I, a question of user safety and emojis, I'd like to see them implemented again. There's in the a, there's a lot of things in life where if you if you try if you put safety as the paramount thing in the equation, then we just don't ever do anything. Um, that's literally the definition like this is why we can't have nice things yeah. it's basically what you're saying but yeah. and i have no problem with them re-implementing it but they need to do something now something yeah. i have big. i have a message from telegram line of tips official as well um on my screen i found on a i believe a different video and it says something huge for you text me to claim there's no emojis not needed and you got to understand too I actually moderate our comments. When I see these guys, when I'm just doom scrolling comments on the can, I will block user from channel, which is a much more useful tool than it used to be. I've, man, I've complained about it so much. The fact that there isn't a single button still for years, years, I've been asking for a single button. I want to report spam, delete oh. the comment and block the user from the channel. One button for years, I've had to choose <laughs> choose a function no no <laughs> no now block user from channel does now at least delete that comment but i don't know if it reports it to youtube as spam because it should only take a handful of spam reports to flag a review okay is this spam yes Pfft. nuked you do have Gone. to be careful with uh so flag review yes auto banning is is spooky people i understand will use that. that as a weapon people will abuse yeah. it absolutely they will abuse it but that's why you have to review it yeah no uh, yeah no for sure and you said it the right way i have another one telegram line sec tips official one <laughs> they added a number it's a different channel um and it's essentially the same thing they're doing the price with the with the gift emoji and just to just to validate that we do in fact have this setting enabled, hopefully I'm not going to show you guys anything I wouldn't too horrible in the dashboard okay. here. Ah, it should be fine. Um, defaults. Hmm. I don't actually. Is it channel guidelines? Welcome message. Okay. Oh, example guidelines. Uh. <laughs> well, here here's a good guideline. <laughs> no self promotion or spam. Uh, okay, I actually don't know where in the dashboard this is. I'm going to go ahead and block links. Where am, where am I looking for here? Defaults? Com ah, yes, here we go. Okay, so verified. This is, in fact, this is, in fact, enabled. And yet, discard changes. Well, I didn't make any changes, smart guy. And yet, here we are. So I found a block of them here from about three hours ago where this Linus Tech Tips official Telegram account is just replying to people. And I can go in and I can hide user from channel. Still can't report it at the same time. And so this one probably won't be there anymore. Oh, that's so stupid. Oh, I hate... Man, inconsistent UI stuff drives me crazy. Every other site on the entire internet, you click the timestamp and it will load the page with that comment. No, I guess I'll click here. <laughs> sure, why not? Let's do it differently because we're just different. This appears to still be here. So what just happened then? Uh, we do know that there's a, like, is that the exact one? Because we found Line Sector's official one as well. So is there like a, a a special character? These all appear to be from the same one. Telegram, Linus Tech Tips official. I don't remember which one I removed, but let's see. Is this one still here? And it's just, you know, at the at the volume. Yeah, this is, appears to still be here. At the volume of comments that there are on a channel our size. And you'll see it on evergreen content in particular. It'll be on the brand new videos that were just uploaded. 
and the old ones that still get a lot of views, you can't, it's not manageable for us to moderate this stuff manually unless there are tools. Like if the community could report it to us and it was as simple as going through a daily report being like, yes, 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 no, yes, no, 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 yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, right? Like that's, that's manageable, but we can't go digging for it. It's absurd. So yeah. anyway, this is all the evidence that huh. I need. Night, Night pause in Floatplane chat said it's easier to kill a channel by using by falsely. I'm adding some things here. It's easier to kill a channel by falsely using DMCA than it is to get rid of spam. Well, there's been some there's been some controversies. Sheesh. I haven't had the time, unfortunately, to look into some of the recent controversies in enough depth to talk about them. Oh, here's another one. Telegram me at official Linus Sebastian. All right. You know what? I will. See so if you can just have like a cordial conversation with them. Yeah. Why don't we just, uh, why don't we just, why don't we just have a chat? Why don't we have a little chat? <laughs> you should, you should call it. <laughs> oh, is your uh, telegram tied to your phone number? Oh, hold on. I've got my, uh, I've got my uh, drug dealer phone. Ah, very nice. Very good. <laughs> I don't think it's charged though. Crap. USB C? No, my iPhone's not charged. Oh. Um may I please have a, a lightning charger? Thanks. All right. Okay. Well Should we uh, move on in the meantime? Yeah, let's move on. Let's move on in the meantime. Hold on. I'm just gonna uh I'm just gonna hide this user from the channel. So yeah, this this is this, this is it's clear that what they're doing is not enough. My challenge to YouTube, go nuclear. Go nuclear. Get rid of it. Slowly re-implement. Because that's the only way. Change one variable at a time. See, okay, does this, and, 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 the thing is, is you might say, oh, well, that's, that's too much. It's too far. Well, okay, then we'll know soon enough, won't we? Because there will be zero spam, or maybe there won't be, because that's the other outcome. Maybe they'll still be able to get around it. Maybe it turns out the nuclear option actually isn't even enough and yeah. they need to do more. But we won't know unless we actually do something. And I don't think they've, I don't think they've done enough. It's starting Man, to look it is like... everywhere. Oh, look yeah. at this. Look at this. <laughs> it's just every single comment. And so whenever a YouTube employee asks me, oh, can you please send me an example? Like, look, I don't want to be disrespectful. Just use your own website. For but seconds. do you even mm -hmm. use the platform? If you haven't experienced this spam and you haven't witnessed it being a problem, the only conclusion I can come to is that you don't even use YouTube. Like, I don't know. Sometimes I get, I get very, I may have a reputation for getting quite fired up, riled up by things. when I engage with YouTube employees. And I feel bad about that. I legitimately do. I actually, I, I went off on, ugh, here's another one. Here's a freaking another one. I'm not even trying to look for them. Here it is. Same video. How about we make them a comment moderator? Yeah, for sure. That would be good. <laughs> ugh, it's so it's so frustrating. So I, I went off on someone that, as far as my knowledge goes, is fairly influential in the mobile creator studio app because oh you have no issues with that at all because there have been a number of changes made that i whether this individual had any influence over them or not honestly it's hard to say because a lot of the a lot of the problems at youtube seem to be coming from uh from somewhere higher is is all i'll say i but I, I basically like lost it. I was sitting here going, okay, I spent a bunch of time talk, talking to you about this, laying out things that would be useful, um, like period over period comparisons is something that used to be in the mobile creator studio app. So I could easily see this month over last month, for example. Instead, they replaced it with this compared to your typical performance uh, line. So it shows kind of what your typical range is for performance and then where you were relative to that. The problem for me is that I've experienced the shortcomings of the typical performance metric. T 
typical performance might look at some kind of rolling average of your last three or your last six months or something along those lines. And if you were at the low end of your typical performance six months in a row, guess what just happened? Your channel got way smaller. And you've got this little green check, bar, check mark in your, in your dashboard that says everything is okay. No, it's not okay. <laughs> Looking at month over month is the way that any functional business operates. So you will look at, you'll look at period over period. You'll look at this period year over year. That's how you monitor trends. You don't monitor trends by going, oh, compared to typical. What is typical? I mean, if, okay, if you want to have a section of the dashboard where I can define typical, where I can say typical is whatever my last 28 days was. It's, I still don't think that's like great. Well, no, it's obviously, it's a stupid workaround to yeah. a problem that should have never existed. Anyway, yeah. the point is, I absolutely went off on this person. I felt, I felt terrible because I, I know, I know deep down that many of these changes probably nothing to do with this individual and they were they were either directives or just sort of general general directions that youtube is going like for example there's far reduced visibility for dislikes yeah in the creator studio app and it's it's really frustrating because <laughs> okay my workaround for this 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 is a really good one okay so let's go look at this it used to be that i could see like dislike ratio right here uh, so it was just like right when you so click on a like video, a key metric of a video, it would be like right there because right after I publish, that's one of the first things I look at. Okay. Do people even like this thing? And because I'm comparing apples to apples, my own channel that uploads every day to my own channel uploading again today, it's just, it's a really quick and easy litmus test. Oh, well, they moved it. Well, thanks for that. Now I get to click go to video analytics where it is conveniently not on the first page. The below the full? I get oh, to no, go okay. click engagement. And then finally, I can see a ratio, but not absolute values. I can only see a percentage. Now, what do you what do you notice about this ratio? This is a video that was published yesterday. Seems pretty high. Well, that's channel average. Okay. Where's the actual ratio? It says NA, doesn't it? Oh, that's actually... Oh, okay. I was reading it completely wrong. Okay, it, it I get it. It takes, there's a delay for it to populate. Now, my workaround for this used to be that I could just, that I could click the, that I could click the go to YouTube icon in the Creator Studio app in order to see f***ing analytics, right? And then I could go view it on the actual YouTube app. But guess what? I can only view that if I'm logged in as that channel because I can't see dislikes anymore. And and you might think it's not an inconvenience to be logged in as the actual channel because clearly I was in the creator studio. But because we have multiple channels, we actually have a multi-channel management tool where I am logged in as my work account. I have no way on my phone to see the like-dislike ratio <laughs> of this video we uploaded yesterday. This is absolutely basic information that I need to do job. I love how in your like, I went too far. <laughs> Rant number three, baby, let's go. The point is that I shouldn't have targeted an individual. I shouldn't have gone off on an individual now, in fairness, I didn't I didn't call names. Like it wasn't like that. But I I I went after these problems in a way that made it seem as though I thought that they could immediately fix them. And I I, I clearly I understand that they can't. It's just it's very frustrating. You know, they're sitting there not solving real problems, breaking solutions that I already had to my problems. Like I I just I, I don't know how to I don't know how to I don't know how to talk about it anymore because I've asked nicely. I'm, I'm I've, pointed I've, out I've, I've been happy to hear about the, that they plan to do better for HDR. Sure. But I have often thought that they have been going in very weird directions developmental wise. Um, I've just, just like working on really odd things, taking features away instead of adding features, like not, not doing things that you would hope for a company to do if you wanted to see that company grow. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. It seems like they're trying to control their current user base more than they are trying to grow their user base. That might be because they think their user base is the entire world. Well, they're trying to go well, I mean, somewhat they be correct wrong. about that. And they are trying uh, to grow their user base, but it's through tools like Shorts, for example. It's not through right. necessarily, I don't know. I don't even know what to call this. I mean, how is it even possible that in the analytics drop down, there's no custom date range? How's it even possible in the year 2022? That's such a like crazy list yeah. to go through. We've when got you can't seven just days, 28 days, 90 days, 365 days, lifetime, June, May, April, March, February, January, December, 2021, November, 2021, October, 2021, September, 2021, August, 2021, and July, 2021. No custom. Why would I ever want to see a custom date range? Now, as I recall, and I'm a little rusty on this because it's been a while since they completely up the mobile creator studio. Little rusty on this one, but I believe there used to be a way for me to just drag it there definitely was on desktop, which was amazing. Because on the desktop one, there was even a little bar below where you could see like a much larger time period. Oh, yeah. And then you could take your highlighted period and you could move it and do like a quick like, okay, what if I want to see one year over one year? And you could get, and all the analytics would just like immediately There's a bump here. What you. was that? Boop. Yeah, you could just yeah. go look at it. It's um, very easy. And, and, it would, and it would update everything below it. Like what the top viewed videos in that time it was like, oh, it was amazing. And then clamping down on Social Blade too. Well, yeah. I, I have I have sent yet another polite request for them to give Social Blade proper API access again so they can store the data for longer than two years. Uh, it's just it just sucks because these are these are tools that we use to to do our jobs, right? And you know, I get it, maybe maybe you don't care about me doing a better job of making videos, but gosh darn it, you probably should. Oh my God. That's, uh. Probably should indeed. Sort of fundamental, you know. Oh. You need trying to find a Type C it? port. Yeah, no, I got this. Okay, Gotta charge up my iPhone. We, Sorry, we, I, we uh, mentioned it in. Uh, should we move on? Yeah, I, I guess so. I, I, I'm, I'm done. I'm. These are all conversations that I've had before, and instead of just, no offense, sort of shouting into a vacuum because there's nothing you guys can do to fix it. I've had these conversations with actual people who work on these actual tools and it's still been ineffective. And one of the really frustrating things has been that, you know how we did a video recently talking about the deplorable state of HDR on YouTube? So I, I already talked to you about how fires have been, been lit yeah, over that's cool. there. And, and now I'm hearing it from third parties that oh. fires have been lit over there. Cool. Sort of. Because it shouldn't take that. It shouldn't. I shouldn't have to make a video. I shouldn't have to. I should say, hey, I'm a content creator on your platform. I'd like to think a pretty successful one. Here, I'm telling you. I'm telling you what I need. These are my tools. You actually don't use them. No offense. You don't use them. Like talking to a YouTube employee. It, it, it's like it's like when I was at NCIX. And the, the, the president would have changes made to the product management team's tools. And he and the developers would get together and have a meeting about how they should work. And then we'd get them and we're going, hey, there's extra f***ing clicks. And you increase the loading time so that you can add this extra measure that I don't even use. Literally none of us use it. And then you won't revert it because now you've spent a bunch of, you've got this sunk cost fallacy nonsense going on. You spend a bunch of money developing this feature. No, we don't want it. It actually made it worse. You have to talk to people who actually use the tools. I mean, one of the things I've been saying about the Mobile Creator Studio app for the longest time is it should be a one-stop shop for creation. I should not have to use the player app to upload a video, for yeah, example. Yeah. I should not have to use the player app to look at the comments on a community post, for example. And yet, I do. Why do I have to do that? I would, Why I would are they not developing it, that? I would even see it more acceptable if it like didn't work the other way around. Like if you were in the studio app and you wanted to watch a video and it like launched it in the player app, I'd be totally fine yeah, with that it does. but you should be able to do oh okay i didn't even know but you should be able to do all of the creation and like analytic viewing and everything yeah where are my better like comment moderation tools yeah, for example that should be in there in here yeah like it's just it's infuriating like why can't i why can't i manage who my moderators are in here because apparently we need some apparently there's been some unruly stuff in in youtube chat today but i have, I have no way to 
control that personally. So. Oh my God! Here's another one. Telegram me at Linus Tech Tips twenty. Yeah, it's not working, guys. It's not good enough, and you should have known that immediately. Oh yeah. Because you've already been trialing these features on channels like mine, where it's clearly not working. Why do I have to be the one to spell this out? Maybe you should hire me as an executive so I can come in and have an ounce of common sense. Hmm, if this isn't working in our limited trial, maybe it's not good enough. Maybe to determine if it's working or not, all I have to do is go look at a video. <laughs> that, that is the weirdest part. Like when the fact that they asked you for an example is actually astonishing because you can, you can go anywhere on YouTube and they're just all over the place. So I don't know. It's very odd. Let's move on. I was going to say, you done? Okay. I think we should mention that there's new stuff in the store. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for, you can go to hell. But like, I can't do this all day. Nope. <laughs> what are we talking about? New stuff in the store. Oh, new stuff on the store. Okay, let's talk about cool stuff for a change. LTTstore.com. Oh man, have we ever got some stuff for you guys? It's summer! Sun's out! Calves? Legs out? Calves, calves out? out? Calves out? Yeah. Man, my legs are pale. Knees out? But that that's okay. Don't worry. Our shorts will not make your legs look as pale as, as mine. They've got waterproof zippers because that's just how we roll. YKK, baby! They're made out of the same 100% cotton French terry fabric as our sweatpants. I... Yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this as Adam's employer, but I'd say they complement the assets. Ah. In my in my humble opinion. <laughs> okay, in my humble opinion. We've got sizes from small all the way to 3XL. Don't forget that oh, channeling my inner muscle man. Don't forget you can mouse over the picture. Oh, not all of them apparently. Some of them are Oh yeah, yeah. You can mouse over the picture. You can see who modeled them, what size they're wearing. That's a really, really cool feature. Uh, we love zipper pockets around here. Good place to keep your phone. Is it my butt? It's my butt. Let's go. Is that your butt? I think so. Oh, nice butt. Nice. Nice butt where you fret. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not the greatest pickup line. Um, <laughs> while you're at it with your shorts, we've got two, two printed hoodies that I believe you've got one more week to order. Mm. The hard drive hoodie. Please do not use this graphic. It is not representative. This one. There we go. We should make that the default graphic for it. It looks absolutely flipping amazing in person. The exploded hard drive hoodie, as well as we're doing a reprint of the processor hoodie, which also gets a ton of comments. This one looks amazing. Absolutely amazing. So you guys can check those out. Really good reviews. Great hoodie. Glad I got a size up. Oh, import document declared. So I was charged tax. We review, just so you guys know, we review all low star uh, reviews and make sure we get in touch with people. By the way, we did come up with a plan for what to do about, oh, I didn't get my order. I didn't get my order. Like uh, like one star reviews when it was just like lost in the mail. There's nothing we can do about that. Um, uh, what, what, was, what did we settle on? Oh yeah. Yeah. We're going to just do a respond feature. But it's going to take some time. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we'll just. Um, we'll I wasn't just sure if there was like some customer service back end stuff you're talking about or whatever. But yeah, in, in regards to the reviews, it's just replies. Also, I think there oh, may that have... that exists by the way. Oh, we just have to implement it or what? You just have to do it. Oh. All right. Well, I will. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll have to talk to um, Nick about that. Then. They may not know how. By the way, I just want to clarify something. Exists. When I was talking about editing the reviews before. I think there was a bit of a miscommunication because the way that, okay, for example, I've edited people's posts on the forum before because I'm an admin and I have that power. Uh, sometimes I do it to troll people. But I would never make it seem as though the words came from that person. So the way that I meant was in like old school forum style. So their post would be there, unedited. And then it would then say, like edit, bold. Respond, response from mm. Linus Tech Tips team. This commenter, said that we could say that we got this resolved and here's how we did it. Like it would be a response. So essentially the response thing was exactly what I was asking for. I think if there were, yeah. I just am dumb and didn't come up with that. Right. Well, it exists. So there yeah. you go. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to clarify that because there were some, I saw, I saw some comments on the forum and on Twitter, like, man, Linus is really getting into like shady business practices. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Whoa, whoa, I'm not talking making it seem as though someone said something they didn't. People are yeah, people are a little bit less cool with the with the comment editing stuff that uh give me one quick second. Oh. Oh, okay. Apparently Nick didn't know. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. You can cool. yeah, you can reply, it's a thing, whatever. I don't know. People are less cool with the comment editing uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So like back in old school forum days, yeah. that was standard and accepted. But I think I think you can't do that on like Reddit. So now it's like super weird. Oh, to say like edit, blah blah, whatever else. Really? Because I because that's not that's not like a new internet thing. But that's the more transparent way to do it. No, I think it'd be a reply. A reply. But then it might not be seen. Whereas, like, I'm not talking about editing the original because I, I mean I I believe in transparency, so I'm talking like you would leave. The original post. No, I know, I know. It's it's just if you, oh, it's a okay. it's a line that can be crossed. That now there could be suspicion of whether or not you are editing parts of the original post of anything, right? I guess so. But I don't know. Oh, I apparently, know. no, you can self edit on Reddit. No, you can self edit. You can't edit oh, other you mean people's like moderators. Posts. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, sure. You can self edit on Reddit. Um, also, there's. The, there's the Jerry Rig razor knife. Uh, yeah, so this is interesting. We got in touch with Zach, Jerry Rig everything, and we were all like, hey, we've got these giant desk pads. Uh, they're so big that it turns out um, this particular one is maybe <clears throat> makes more sense as a desk pad uh, as four desk pads. <laughs> so I believe the one we're running the promo on is the one uh, 1.2 meter by 700 centimeter desk pad. Uh, this boy, this boy right here. If you pick up one of these, so uh, uh, this one right here, let's go ahead and add that to cart. I believe it applies automatically, bonus spin. Nope, I have no idea how this works. Oh. Oh my gosh, did we actually do it this way? Okay, apparently, we just carry the, the, the cherry rig racer knife now. So if you add the giant desk pad and a jerry rig knife to your cart, you will get your jerry rig knife for zero dollars. You can use it to cut up your desk pad into four desk into four <laughs> mouse pads, and you will also get a Jerry Rig knife. So we reached out to Zach. We were like, "Hey, we've got this giant desk pad. Uh, we think, you know, for some people it might make sense as four mouse pads, but they might not have a knife. Do you have a knife? Do you have hundreds of knives? Could we maybe buy hundreds of knives?" And he was like, "I got you, but balder." <laughs> It was like that, but much balder nice. and musclier. I mean, you know how Zach is, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's it. That's the promo. Add the 1200 by 700 millimeter Northern Lights desk pad to your cart. Add the Jerry Rig knife to your cart in whatever color you like, and you will get the knife for $0 and four mouse pads. Um, you should also pick up some other stuff that we actually make money on, please. That would be terrific. How about... A water bottle, or the new shorts, or one of the one of the hoodies. The shorts are nice. Yeah, I'm stoked about the shorts actually. Uh oh, wait a second. Did we launch the women's sweatshorts as yeah. well? Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, they are we there. also have the women's ones. So we have the unisex ones and the women's ones. Designed for all and relaxed fits, smooth front tear. Oh wow, look at that. Can I just say massive shout out to our staff for being such good sports about like modeling the merch. Like we get contributions across the across every sort of spectrum that you could possibly think of. And I think it gives us a really cool vibe. There's so much more variety in our merch pictures. They're real people instead of just Yeah, like, it's not like one person who took a photo with a green screen shirt one time yeah. and then it's used on like every single product ever. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's nice. As someone who uh, gets kind of frustrated by the concept of clothes shopping online because it's like, how the heck is this going to fit me ever? Um, it's nice to be able to see quite a range of like body sizes and types so I can figure out actually how something might fit me. Yeah, Foos King Zero says, I wouldn't model unless I was paid. I mean, to be clear, they're all paid. They're paid. <laughs> but 
But modeling the merch is not part of their regular job duties. It's something that people just do because, I mean, our shooters do make it kind of fun, actually. Yeah. You, you kind of, you kind of you feel like... You get to like, do, like, random stuff yeah, all the time. you kind of feel like a model, you know? It's, yeah. yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah. It was a good shoot. Shorts was a good shoot. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Did you shoot with... Oh, uh, is our I think new it's... graphic designer off probation yet? I don't believe so. Okay, I was going to well, say, I think it's still a, a probo. Person. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and In jump into our next topic, shall we? Less cool news. Oh, we should do some merch messages. Oh, sponsors. Right. Okay. Well, Luke, you go first. Go a little card for oh, it. Oh, man. Well, should we should we talk about I'm going to highlight it. It's above. You can scroll up. Oh. What, scroll what, up what, a bunch. What? I thought you were higher than you were. Oh. Yeah? Up a little bit. Oh. Down a little bit. Yeah. There. Oh, yeah. Let's. Uh, we did we allude probably to this talk earlier. About it more yeah, why don't, you, why don't you run through it? Um. Technoblade has died at 23 years old. 23. Uh, the my yeah, crazy. The Minecraft community has gathered to remember Technoblade, a YouTuber with 11.9 million subs, who died at the age of 23 after announcing he'd been diagnosed with cancer in his right arm last year. Uh, while sick, he wrote a farewell letter, uh, which was read by his dad in a YouTube video to his channel yesterday, uh, titled "So Long, Nerds." <laughs> which remains at number one on YouTube's trending page. In the video, Technoblade reveals um, that his name is Alex, not Dave, which I think actually it's so funny. They yeah. they pranked... It, you got to watch the video because there's a lot of other... Just, you got to watch the video. Uh, but they, they pranked their audience by making them think that his name was uh, uh, Dave. He made it seem like they leaked. Dave accidentally was leaked. It reminded me a lot of trying to essentially like hide my address when i used to live in the basement suite the type same type of tactics was, yeah i don't know um friend and co-streamer tommy in it posted a minecraft screenshot of an in-game note left by technoblade uh saying that having abolished all governments of men i have ascended to heaven to take on the kingdom of god which is just pretty <laughs> epic <laughs> Um, and hours after his death, his family released planned merch um, w with the a portion of the proceeds will be going to the sarcoma, which I believe is the type of cancer that he had, um, Sarcoma Foundation of America. Um, and the planned merch is all like, it's uh, yeah, like GG easy, good game. Um, yeah, I've got it up now. Yeah. So. Yeah, this is the one I like, the So Long Nerds one. So Long Nerds, that one's really good, but. Yep. Yeah, consider checking it out. Um, yeah. Portion of the proceeds going to a good place, and a portion of the proceeds is going to go to, I'm assuming, to to help his family, which is also a good thing. So, yeah, watch the video too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's that's one of the ways that you can you can support them in this time. You know, watch yeah. the video, leave a comment. Yeah. Um, you know, that was something that um, affected my family more than and actually me more than i realized it would uh when my grandpa passed um the one that we did the grandpa meets google video with uh there were many members of my family that just kind of sat and uh and read the comments just just the the outpouring of of good vibes from the community um and it, it was just it was it was very helpful for them. You know, they just sat, thought of him, sat and, you know, read these positive, these positive messages of encouragement. It, it means a lot. So I would say that, you know, you don't have to spend money to support someone. Go, leave a comment, um, you know, watch the video. His, his dad hosted the video and like, that's got to be an incredibly tough thing to do. Oh man. I can't even imagine. I host videos every day, and I have no idea how I would even begin to host a video about my son passing at the tender age of 23. I do not want to outlive my kids, man. Tough dude. Like, like just watching him host that video the whole time, I was like, holy cow. The fact that, like, he can do this at all is, yeah. Yeah, answer, man. Yeah, big agree. Yeah, that one's rough. Um, I'm going to come up with a good segue to our sponsor, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know, know, man. Uh, I do have to do them. Otherwise, my producer will yell at me. <laughs> Literally, cue cards that were coming up before we did that topic. Yeah. Uh, the show is brought to you today by Reloptics. Tired of wearing glasses with your VR headset? 
Reloptics has got you covered. Oh, this is cool. I'd never even heard of what? these guys until now. Reloptics uses premium Essler lenses with anti-static and fingerprint resistance. They offer prescription lens kits for a number of VR headsets, Whoa. giving you the ability to enjoy virtual reality without your glasses. Each lens comes with anti -glare, with an anti-glare coating with optional blue light protection at no additional cost, and they use high-index lenses automatically for higher prescriptions. Reloptics also offers non-prescription lens kits in case you just want to protect your headset lens from irreparable scratching, which is a big deal. Their lens kits include a hard case, microfiber cleaning cloth, lens bag, magnetic lenses, and a magnetic base to attach to your headset. They even offer flat rate pricing, so no matter how high your prescription is, the price doesn't change. Which is another way of saying that the people with cheaper ones are subsidizing those with more expensive <laughs> ones. Which, to be clear, we're, we're fine with. That's what we do for our water bottles yeah, and all that. I think, normal. I think standard pricing makes sense. I don't think people should have to spend an extra $4 because they wear a you know triple XL shirt. That's stupid. Like, why are you why are you doing that to someone? Like, they didn't ask to have horrible eyes. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Come yeah. on. <laughs> Best of all, they include a one-year warranty. So start protecting your eyes and your headset today and check out Reloptics at the link down below. Pretty cool. The show is also brought to you by Squarespace. Them, I know. If you're building your brand online in 2022, you should absolutely have a website. And if you need a tool to help you build that brand, look no further than Squarespace. Their all-in-one platform will help you expand your brand online by making a beautiful website, engaging with your audience, and selling anything and everything from products to content. We love Squarespace so much. We use it here at LMG. We, we really love the ease of use. We put very little effort into our websites like <laughs> LinusMediaGroup.com, uh, LTXExpo.com. They and work and they look good. It makes it so fast and, and it just it's just like autopilot. And you don't have to maintain them either. You don't have to maintain it. That's, that's awesome. That's the best it's part. big. <laughs> Their custom templates make it easy to stand out with a beautiful website that fits your knees. Needs. Fits your knees? Like our shorts, LTT Startup. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, you can maximize your visibility thanks to a suite of integrated SEO features, and their analytic insights help you optimize your performance to see what's going well and what needs a little work. So get started today and head to squarespace.com forward slash when to get 10% off your first purchase. Finally, the show is brought to you by Secret Lab. Secret Lab chairs are designed to keep you comfortable for those long nights of work and play. And their Titan Evo 2022 series chairs offer four way lumbar support, come with a magnetic <laughs> magnetic memory foam pillow and are offered in different upholsteries like hybrid leatherette, soft weave fabric, and Napa leather. Best of all, they have a five-year extended warranty. Um, a five-year extended warranty is included along with a 49-day return policy, so you're covered if anything goes wrong. Save up to $130 during their mid-year sale at the link down below. Secret Lab. Good chairs. Good chairs. Is the sponsor spot over? Okay, Secret Lab. Good chairs. <laughs> <laughs> what? What do you want from me? <laughs> they are. They're good chairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Merch messages break. Are you going to test this thing or whatever? I don't yeah, even remember what you need to do with it. Let's do some. Um, uh, so let's do some merch messages, shall we? Oh, I gotta get. I gotta get Telegram on here. I don't. Oh, oh, crap. oh, right. While you do that, oh, wanna go God. for it? New iCloud terms and conditions. <laughs> yeah, hit me with some merch messages. Yeah. From Joshua. Since the start of LTT, what milestones did you have for the company, and have you surpassed them? Are there any new milestones that you've set <laughs> that uh, you haven't crossed yet? I mean, the goal was four to five people, and it being <laughs> it having enough revenue that we can all make like a, a, a real. I want to be, have a real wage, you know. <laughs> um, that was it. From there, it went to I want to be a real company, and then and. Luke can attest to this. I did actually do the voice and I did actually say that like seven, eight, nine years ago. I have been saying it since very early. It definitely happened in that exact voice. Yeah. I want to be a real company. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one million was, was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. One million was cool. 10 million. Honestly, was didn't really care. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I did a lot of personal reflection at 10 million just because right. so much of my life has been poured into this. I'd say for me personally, my goal is for that real company to be able to function without me. That's that's a big one. That's the next level because there's a big difference between a CEO that is running a successful company and a good 
CEO. And to, to me, just because this company is successful with me at the helm doesn't actually mean that I built a good company. The true measure of a good company is that the culture and the hustle to and survive with mismanagement. The the, the decision making. And you give it a good manager. Can survive without me, so that's that's really my next goal, and I, that's a big part of why Labs is so important because. Right now, I feel like it's it's my it's it, it's my personal passion that drives a lot of the the change in our in our content, and it's not just me. There are different kinds of changes that are driven by different people. The camera department is notorious for constantly pushing me for better production values, for example. The HDR R and D that is being done here is has not been done by me. I I had to I had a briefing with Ed on it today where I was like, oh, what have you been working on for the last while? And he he showed me all all the stuff that we've been doing, all the calls we've been having with we've been talking with YouTube, we've been talking with Adobe. Um you know, learning how to how to use these tools. It's like, oh okay, well cool. Well we got keep at it. Right? Like <laughs> But I feel like the that passion that drove me to stay up till the middle of the night, replying to people's threads on the forum to make sure they didn't buy the right thing, that's something that we don't have an obvious internal replacement for. And our writers are great, but you need that. It has to, it has to trickle down. You know what I mean? Like, like the the writers and the editors and the shooters, they're not the the bosses of each other. Do you kind of get what I mean? And so, if you can't have an individual that is injecting that passion and that drive, then what you need is a department whose entire job is to have that drive. And so, that's a big part of why labs exist because. One or of the to, things or I, to pull something into a more of an analytical space so that you can create actionable items instead of just forcing it to be passion all the time. Yes, exactly. Arm the team with the tools yeah. that make it easy to, 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 to put that analysis into the work that they do. And, and it's not the lab is not just for video reviews. The lab is for consumers. The lab is for our business team. Man, one of the first things I want the lab doing once they are fully set up is vetting sponsors. I mean, when we have a, a charger company come in and say, okay, we've got a 65 watt charger, it's this small, make sure. And if it's 66 watts, then let's talk about that. And if it's 64, well, then we're changing the talking points, damn it. And like, I just, I, I feel like it's, it's the solution to so many, maybe not necessarily problems, but, but future potential pitfalls. Having that, having that team in place, and and building out that that infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, what was I supposed to be talking about right now? This was a merch message. Oh. Do you have any milestones that you haven't hit? Or... Is there, yeah, yeah, is well, there new milestones? Yeah, yeah. I think but... I think that was voiced. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, that one. Cool. From Michael, I'm working on making my house smart, but would like to air gap most items. What are your th thoughts on smart locks? I don't have any smart locks. Um, do you want your lock to be picked physically or through software or yeah. both? What difference does it make? Quite frankly, there's going to be security vulnerabilities with both hundred uh, percent. There's, there's this quote from someone, I don't remember who, and I'm going to misquote it. So I'm sorry. Cause you probably said it better than I did. Whoever it said it. Right. Um, but it's like, there's something along the lines of like software engineers want like, f like traditional locks because they know the software is not secure. And like people who are good at like machining and mechanics and stuff want smart locks because they know the mechanical locks are insecure. <laughs> it's like <laughs> there's problems with both. <laughs> Just try to try to find a uh, I don't know. There's some there's some creators on YouTube. Lock picking lawyers, a fantastic one. There's other ones as well uh, that review this type of stuff. Just try to find the best thing you can. Yeah. From Trey. Interesting. Oh, sorry. Wrong message from Ridge. Hey, love you guys. Been watching since the NCIX days. A couple weeks ago, you mentioned a potential compatibility issue with your Harmony remote. I'm also in need of a replacement, but not sure what to buy. Would uh, you consider doing a roundup or have you done any research? We actually got this question three times today about okay. your Harmony remote. Yeah, uh, my Harmony remote, the compatibility issue that I ran into was that 
the database entries are not really getting updated anymore because Logitech doesn't give two hoots about Harmony because they don't even sell the products anymore. So it was uh, it was a Marantz slash Denon. I, I, I don't remember the actual brand on it, but it's like their, their parent that makes their receivers. It was this little HDMI 2.1 switcher that is meant to add more HDMI 2.1 inputs to those first gen HDMI 2.1 receivers that don't have a ton of inputs, which is like stupid because that's the whole point of the receiver, right? So <laughs> it's it's a really cool product. It's this it's this pretty inexpensive. It's just a few hundred dollars and I think it's three inputs, one output. And it was uh, a really good way to have a PC, Xbox and PlayStation 5 all running HDMI 2.1 to a 2.1 TV. And the cool thing is you don't even need their receiver to use it, even though all of their marketing materials say it's it's an accessory for the receiver. I can tell you from personal experience, it totally works without it. Goodbye. Anyway, they it's not in the database, whereas the old model is. Now I was able to train it. You can you can add something new manually, but that's a hassle that not everyone wants to deal with. And I suspect that as the software continues to not get updated, it's going to get more and more difficult to use. Like their desktop software clearly hasn't been touched since, like, oh, I don't know, Windows 8 days? Maybe this time? It's a, it's a really clunky interface and it takes a, it's very time consuming to use. One that I have not used yet, but I have one. Sofa Baton sent over there. I believe it's called Sofa Baton X1. That's a fantastic name. X1. Yeah, I believe this is the one that they sent over. Boop. To be clear, I'm not endorsing it. I have not used it yet, but I have heard good things. This appears to be the spiritual successor to Harmony. I, I do intend to try it because I want to have universal remotes at each watching location just so that like my kids or, or like it's little things, you know, the babysitter is over. We're out. The kids are in bed. Like, yeah, sure. Like watch TV. I don't, I don't care. Sorry, Mr. Sebastian, can't figure out how to turn on your TV. Like, that's that <laughs> sucks. That's stupid. <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's it's nice to have a universal remote, right? Guess I'll just sit here. Yeah, I guess I'll just stare at the wall. I mean, <laughs> she brings her homework, but like, mm. I, whatever. Summer. There's no homework, okay? Yeah. You want to watch some TV? Like, I, it's, yeah. it's nice if they're, yeah. if they're able to use it. So that's the one that I'm aware of. Next. From David, I know in your home theater setup, you had to raise the second row up. Did you figure out a solution? Yeah. The solution is a big plywood box. We actually had an outlet wired into the top of it so that the powered couches can plug in and then the backing covers it. So the whole thing is super clean. It's got a single stair. So it's one stair and then up. It's 13 inches. And then we carpeted it and stuffed the whole thing with... Uh, rock wool so that helps uh, that helps prevent it from creating like a reverberation chamber in the middle of the room yeah seems great makes sense from kevin any thoughts on hpe announcing the proliant rl300 arm server this week do you think we'll see a video on the channel talking about the server or thoughts on arm in the data center space oh server Server applications are extremely difficult to benchmark in a meaningful way because so often the companies that use them are running their own software that is completely proprietary. And even if it did have benchmarking tools, they are not available to the general press and wouldn't be because to even run those benchmarking tools, you would have to probably be a developer. That's the problem. Um... There are outlets that do a, in my opinion, great job of covering server hardware. And I think this is one of those situations where we're just going to leave it to them. Maybe go check out Serve the Home. I'm sure that they have some thoughts on it. It's something you might see from us in the future. But right now we are focused on consumer and then server to the extent that it touches on our own business. Yeah. Thanks, Luke. The, move, the move away from x86 is going to be good but I am a little wary about how ready we are. Hyper-specialized situations, like maybe what it's doing is going to work really well with it. If that's the situation that it's deployed in where they know it's going to work really well with it, that's fantastic. 
Um, but I don't think we're like, as an industry, I don't think we can just like flip over right away or anything. This message is from Jonathan, but also a few others. On June 21st, 2019, you predicted that Microsoft Windows <laughs> would be free in three years. Do you have an update on this prediction post-pandemic? I mean, it was sort of a it was sort of a cheat of a prediction because functionally, using Windows does not have to cost money. Microsoft has eased off of their piracy protections to such a degree that it is pretty clear that they don't care. It's also really funny. Like if you Google buy Windows 11 in the sidebar, oh, not even sidebar. The last time I did this was in the sidebar. We're right here. $23 from turnkey point. I'm sure they could get this taken down, but they don't. <laughs> The reality of it is Microsoft wants the whole world running on Windows. That is far, far more important to them than collecting $100 from custom PC builders. They want Windows to be the standard so that companies like HP and Dell will buy licenses in enormous volume. You, you got to understand. They want to sell business licenses. Yeah. They don't care about selling them to you. You, you got you to gotta understand, guys, the, the custom... PC space is this is this tiny splinter in the eye of these companies. We are the loudest, most obnoxious minority. We're lucky they bother listening to us at all because from a business standpoint, we don't matter. Also, such an obscene percentage of people in this space just pirated anyways. Yes. So like like we suck. <laughs> yeah. But in my I think my theory my theory for why oh, we're they do a new pay prediction? attention oh, to no, us okay. is that we're influencers. We're the recommenders. Exactly. Yeah. Everyone watching this show right now is an influencer. It's, it's very likely that if you're watching this, you are like the tech person for your family. So if Microsoft or Intel or AMD or NVIDIA mess with you too bad, well, you're going to stop recommending their stuff and that multiplication effect, it ain't worth it. Yeah. It ain't worth it. So, no, Microsoft hasn't officially gone free to play with Windows 11, but I'm not backing down. It's clearly happening. There's more and more ads and uh, more and more ads and adjacent services included with Windows. You look at the way that um, you know Xbox Game Pass is advertised when you do a fresh Windows install. They are clearly on the trajectory. I just got the timeline wrong. There. From Daniel, any updates on the Selfie cell repeater installation? It's been good. I have cell reception at my house. I don't know what to say about it other than that. You know, if I have a, a Wi-Fi issue for whatever reason, I can flip over to mobile data and it works. And if people call me, I can hear them and they can hear me. I mean, it's one of those things. Cell repeater is such a, a non-sexy. It's a no it's a thankless installation. Yeah, exactly. It gets there. It works right away. You're like, sweet. And then you never think about it again. Never think about it. Not even once more. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, then you're, then you're really mad. Phone. <laughs> it's like a lot of um, it's like a lot of IT work and like server work stuff in general. It's like you don't want to like invest a ton in it. You don't want to care about it and stuff and then it stops working or something goes down and you're like oh <laughs> we need to solve this no we need to throw everything on this okay i will say one positive thing about this haircut mm. it is very easy like when i'm mad <laughs> to get this vibe going <laughs> oh my god i hate this so oh, much oh i know what you're talking i think i know what you're talking about though Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Oh my goodness. <laughs> same same energy for sure. <laughs> From Ryan. Yeah. Just watched the VidCon vlog on Flowplane. It was great. I know you have LTX, but have you ever considered having a booth or hosting a panel at broader events like VidCon? No. No. That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> We have LTX. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, the thing is, I just, 
I know you are going to come at me about this, but... Oh, I'm ready. I don't even know what it is. In-person promotions. Why? In-person promotions. Yeah. Like, it's just, it seems like an utter waste of time. I think in-person promotions of you or, like, a YouTube channel, I would agree. Because I know you've gone after Intel for abandoning PAX, yeah, for example. Yeah, and they like are... Maintaining a booth And there. they are wrong about that. Okay. Um, but I don't think you need to have a booth there. So, well, I okay, but you got to remember, I'm not just me anymore. There's, I don't think Linus Tech 80 Tips. people. I don't think Linus Tech Tips needs to have a booth. Who work there. for I have Yvonne been, Umbrella Corporation. There's been a few creators that have like, <laughs> there's, been, <laughs> <laughs> there's been a few creators uh, that have had booths at shows before. And I've been like, why are you, why? Because how many people can you possibly hope to reach with a physical presence? Dozens? Hundreds? Thousands? 10,000? Maybe? There's also a, a medium thing, right? Like you create, or the, the company, whatever, right? Because we're not talking about you specifically. Linus Media Group and all the derivatives, they create, that's, we need a name for that. Um, they create videos. They create online content. If you go to YouTube, you're there to see their stuff. Right? Yeah. You don't go to these places to find products, to find new companies, to find peripheral things. And it's also like, I'm not going to go to a show and be like, okay, I'm going to evaluate Linus by his handshake. I might go to a show to evaluate Corsair keyboards by how it is to type on them. Yeah. Okay. Like there's, there's, there's reasons why these companies should be in these places. And I don't think well, it's the same. Well, should we as be there person. with our merch? That uh, increases, uh, like, yeah, having a pop-up shot at a, at a certain thing could make sense. I mean, it's low-key, an enormous part of our business. Now. No, that could totally make sense. I don't necessarily think we should have, like, a personality panel. That might be something that you could do to draw attention to that booth in the exact same way that other companies might hire an influencer, a creator, whatever, right. to bring attention to a booth. It might be the same thing, effectively. It would actually be really funny if you just hired other creators to, to bring attention to the, to the LTD store booth. Um, I mean, you know that we're doing some influencer marketing around yeah. our products, right? Yeah. Like we have, uh, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to name the names. I want it to be a surprise, but we have like WAN hoodie promotions going up on other influencers channels. We definitely have some stuff lined up for screwdriver launch. Like it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Farno over in float plane chat. Okay, hear me out. What about Yvonne and partners? Not liking that name. I think it's great. <laughs> you got something to tell me? <laughs> I'm <seeing it. laughs> Partner implies two. That's not really a partnership. <laughs> you don't have partners, Yvonne. That's... <laughs> uh, why don't we jump into our next topic? Intel's block scale crypto miner hmm. is out early. They finally shipped their block scale ASIC. It was originally slated for Q3 release, codename Bonanza Mine. Secure hash algorithm, two, it's a secure hash algorithm, 256 hardware accelerator that can do up to 580 giga hash per second with just 4.8 to 22.7 watts of power consumption. That is freaking incredible. It's 14.2 millimeters squared, which is actually a pretty tiny die, meaning each wafer can produce a theoretical 1,250 chips and is manufactured on the cutting edge TSMC N5 process. This thing sounds freaking awesome if it was six months ago. <laughs> I, I think, I don't know. I think that take is wrong. And maybe this is a hot take. Really? I hot think it's, take me, baby. I think it's still fine that it comes out now. I did a tech link today and I said what was in the thing. Did and then you? I came here and I saw this and I was like, okay, now I can throw my own spit on this. And I don't think I don't think it's too late. Really? I think these will fly. You think they will fly? I think they will fly. Well, okay. For one thing. The cryptocurrency uh, industry is clearly in need of some more efficient hardware if prices yeah. have crashed. Yeah. Because like a lot of the pro like discourse that I've seen online, a lot of the problem is that the calculation of performance per watt is just not there now. Mm -hmm. It's not people being like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. It's, oh, 
right now, technically, if I turn my machines on, I'm losing money, which right. is a situation that crypto mining has been in multiple times in the past because difficulty ramps or whatever, right? Now, this topic was, crea- was, uh, was, I don't know, populated, was filled out by uh, Nicholas Plouffe, who did some very helpful math. Thanks, Plouffe. You should be, uh, you should be a writer for LTT for a living. The, one of the issue, I mean, aside from the fact that there was a crypto crash and investment in the space is going like, like this, is that Intel talked a lot about the energy efficiency of this, of this ASIC um, over a thousand times the performance per watt. But the issue is that they compared themselves to discrete GPUs, which is fine for certain algorithms, but compared to dedicated ASIC miners is not very good. And according to Plouffe's math, the new Bonanza mine block scale ASIC from Intel seems to be worse than a an Ant main Bitcoin miner S19 that's, XP Hydro. That's not necessarily going to matter too much. Um, did he do a wattage calculation? Yeah. So, so what's the difference? That here? miner is 255 terahash per second at 5,300 watts. And 256 of Intel's chips would be 148 terahash per second at 5,800 watts. Oh, this is less power efficient. So then cost will just be the equation. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about that industry is it's it's all just down to cost. It's it's funny. I saw a, I saw a tweet today. Someone was um, saying like, oh, it turns out that a big part of the silicon shortage was mining because apparently there's just like in certain industries. Did we not know that? Inventory is piling up. And I was tagged on, uh, yeah, anyone who's been paying even sort of attention like, and I was obviously. one of the people tagged, obviously knew this. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like you're you're in an it's, industry it's, where it's all just money driven. It's what a calculation. You're, what you're attempting to buy is a money printing machine. Yeah, but that so money if it printing doesn't machine print money very well. Then you won't buy it. That money printing machine costs money to buy, and it costs money to run. So it's it's a fairly simple calculation. So they they need if they can get their initial cost really low, then there's potential value there. And if you can find customers where their power is cheap or or whatever, they have some way of generating their own power, who knows? Um, if the initial cost is low, maybe they'll be interested in buying your product. If Antmine is sold out like they always are. Yeah, Bitmain never builds enough inventory. Then then maybe you will have inventory at all, so they'll sell out. I Yeah, I don't know. The calculation that it's worse is kind of funny um but i i still and i didn't know that when i was trying to defend it but i still kind of suspect that they'll they'll probably fly because there's a lot of people that are still mining there's a lot of people that still have profitable mining operations as well which i think a lot of like i've just said a lot of people a lot of times um but (laughs) i i I think people are are looking over that because it's more fun to look at the like the wasteland yeah the um, people who are flipping all their gpus on ebay yeah, right now but that is not everyone there are there are people that were more prepared more prepared to weather the storm and i think just because the gold rush is over i don't think mine is going mining is going to end um i think people are going to find a way to exist in the new environment and yeah we'll see um psa I would like people to stop making assumptions about the LTT screwdriver until we actually deliver it. Mm-hmm. We posted a picture on the LTT Twitter oh, of handle the, like, of the components. The blow up, yeah. Yeah. And I have just seen the most wild assumptions. I've seen everything from the ratchet mechanism is not durable, which you would have absolutely no way whatsoever of evaluating because you cannot see it, to that the handle will not stay attached, to that you will be able to twist the handle because there's not enough of a flange, to the, uh, oh man, what was one of the other like really, really wacky ones I saw? Um, Oh, I don't remember, but guys, it's been in development for two and a half years. Do you think we've just been twiddling our thumbs? We have the concept for the pop-up shop all locked in. 
We are hoping that the pop-up shop will happen sometime in the next month to month and a half. At that time, you will be able to in person, assuming you're in Vancouver, you will be able to in person feel it, screw things in with it, screw things out with it. We will have drivers from competing brands on hand. You can try them all out for yourself. Until then, maybe just shut up. That might be good. Rather than compare a thing that you've never held, in, it's a tool. There's a lot more to it than what you can convey in a picture. It has to feel good. It has to, like, it, it has to be durable. It has to just stop. Your poll is terrible. I didn't make that poll. <laughs> They've been twiddling their thumbs. Yes, no, I won't tell. Okay, I have to know. Float plane, come on, guys. I've had enough of you guys. Anyway, the point <laughs> is, the point is, we're going to get people to try it in person. Our intention is to have live stream cameras there. Have I talked about that yet? Yeah, yep. I think that was my idea. We, we will have live stream cameras there where real customers will be able to give their real impressions of it. And just, I am so <laughs> winter stasis over on uh, Twitch. Yeah. 4chan says it's a rebranded generic screwdriver. Sorry, bro. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's, you know what? There, I'll admit it. That's what it is. Thank yeah. you, 4chan. It took how many years of development to, yeah, to rebrand? Really, I'm really glad that you guys were there to tell me what happened over the last two and a half years here. Uh, Lobster Roll says, wow, damn, we pay you. This is how we're treated. How did you guys treat me? Okay, did you consider that? How you treated me? <laughs> 58 of you said, or 76 of you said, yes, we've been twiddling our thumbs. Rude. So rude. They're almost as rude as Luke. <laughs> Zetharian says, Snap-on will be there too. Absolutely. Oh, we'll be there to check it out. Oh, no. I mean, Well, we'll have their screwdrivers there. They don't need to come and bring them, but they can bring more if they like. That would actually be really convenient. There's, there's been a couple comments in Full Plane Chat. It took them a really long time to find the right font for the rebrand logo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it did years. And engineers. Yeah. We had to put some, like, some real engineering work into that font. Uh, there's been a couple comments about the the poll. I just wanted to point out a, a few things. Uh, the mobile version is coming. It's not here yet, but the mobile version is coming. And we have some other kind of like feature ideas. Right now, the admin of the channel, because this is this is going to be rolled out for, for all creators, the admin of the channel can see all polls that have ever happened on the channel, who created them and who closed them and all that type of stuff in an admin panel. Oh, cool. um, but right now that's not viewable for the users. So we're, we're trying to figure out like the best way to maybe do that. I know like Twitch polls and YouTube polls, they just go away, which is mm. how the full plane poll currently works. Right. But we've been thinking like maybe once it's closed and done and the timer fades and all that type of stuff, it could like migrate under the player or something. I don't know. But right now it's it 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 will fade after the poll goes up. But yeah. It's a well known fact that engineers are bad logo designers. It's true. Maybe we should have hired a graphic designer and we would have been able to bring this thing out a lot sooner. What? Oh man, I just yeah, it, it it makes my brain hurt because people will say, "No, it's a, it's a, it's going to be a bad product because it's from an unproven company." It's like, "Well, hold on a second. We licensed IP from MegaPro. They've been around forever. Um their their drivers have held up fine, just fine." So there's there's the people that will say it's it's a it's it's unproven. And it's like, "Well, no." And then there's the people that say it's just rebranded. But also well, no. Have you noticed that it looks absolutely nothing like a Mega Pro driver? Like nothing like it. Yes, it uses some of their patented mechanisms, like the bit loader, um, and we sort of used their ratchet at this point. We've basically redesigned it, but we definitely paid to use it. Um, so it's 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 somewhere it's somewhere in between, because you're not allowed to just build something that uses other people's patented technology unless you license it. So yeah, it's, it's a combination of things, but yes, it will, it will take the things that give good reliability to it from mega pro. And it will take the things that we think make it a great screwdriver, especially for building computers and, uh, add those to it. All right. What else we got to talk about today? NVIDIA released the GTX 1630. 
a dumb card that no one asked for. <laughs> okay. We have asked them to stop editorializing quite so much in these talking points, right? They're not wrong, though. We have. NVIDIA threw Intel a bone by taking the prize for most pathetic GPU of 2022 with the release of the GTX 1630. Yes, not 3030 or 2030, but 1630. GeForce 10 series is still here. Or sorry, 16 series. The specs are Turing architecture, 512 CUDA cores, 1785 megahertz boost, four gigs of GDDR6 and a, ooh, yuck, 64-bit memory bus. It costs That's a awesome. whopping $200 from EVGA, $169 from other manufacturers. Nice. And is about 33% slower than AMD's RX 6400 and the GTX 1650, meaning virtually every other card will get you more performance per dollar than this. Meanwhile, the 1650 Super was released for $10 less back in 2019. This was clearly a solution to yesterday's problem today. Priced for a different market. Yeah, there's there's been a lot of that. Um, a lot of a lot of solutions that came like almost exactly too late. It's like it takes lead time in engineering to make things. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, I think what's well, what card was it? Back in the house. There was a rant video about a graphics card that I believe was a 30 series graphics card. Uh, it was AMD. It was the 5450, if I recall correctly. Let's see if my HD 5450, let's see if my uh, recall is Nvidia good. Card. Oh, no, I screwed it up. No, it's not the 5450. I thought it was like a 7030 or something. Um, I don't know about that. ON GPU Linus. Are they still? Oh, oh, well, there was a second one. Okay, so the first one was an R7 240. That was shot back at the house. Okay, I that's, that. that's the one I'm talking about, though. Not mine. I'm not talking about mine. Oh, but, okay. But the, the, that one with the, the, the AMD card, I already forgot the model, whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's very forgettable. Model. R7 240. Um, that one was like, I really liked that video. And that video for me was, was somewhat affirming of like you know what no i think we're getting pretty good at this that was that was a that was a pretty key moment for me actually and people are still buying that. them yeah a low-end <laughs> gpu never makes sense and i'm sorry it just doesn't people have been the, the, the comment section is so mad they're so so mad about that video well what about if you just need more display outputs for an office monitor pick up something worse a low-end gaming card is always the worst buy yeah well what if i can't afford something better then buy something second worse. hand or second hand buy something second hand <laughs> we're not telling you to. <laughs> we're not telling you to just get more money yeah. we're telling you to spend it like not an idiot yeah and hopefully less of it <laughs> yeah because that's like one of the biggest problems is they're they're expensive for what they are I just, ah, uh, it makes me so, it makes me so angry. The performance per dollar is so low. Can we not just, can we not waste money, please? We should definitely, we should definitely revisit. I'm, I'm making a note. I'm making a note here. Huge mistake. Huge success. What, huge what, success. How does, what's the huge line? Huge success, yeah. Um, need to re, we're just going to redo that video in 8K. <laughs> redo the low end GPUs video again because people clearly haven't gotten the point i think that'll be a solid intro i wouldn't have to make this video if you guys got the point the first two times <laughs> and yet this product exists so here we are <laughs> let's go <laughs> that's actually not bad i should just open it like that hey hey bell can you can you clip that and just like send it to me i'll just throw that right in the script that's pretty good <laughs> pretty solid uh no you didn't miss the telegram thing i think i have telegram now uh, oh, that's test flight. Sorry, I saw I saw a T and immediately went for it. To be fair, like from here, and that screen's really good, so I can actually see it pretty well. I thought that was Telegram as well. Your phone. I don't know my phone number. This is my uh this is my drug dealer phone. Is it in the about of your phone or whatever? Your uh, settings somewhere? Probably. I don't know iPhones. I yeah, I I, I don't, don't know. know. Got to be in here somewhere. G g general about. Here we go. Mm, well, definitely got my carrier in there. Uh, you want to figure that out while I do a topic? Yeah. Sony launches PC peripherals. 
I know, right? New InZone brand has launched with a monitor and a headset. An M9, which is a $900 27-inch 4K 144Hz IPS monitor, which has 96 dimming zones, HDR 600, and auto HDR tone mapping. M3, which is a $530 27-inch. I'm not going to go through all of these, but there's a M9, M3, H9, which is their wireless headset. Uh, H7, which is wireless as well, but not as fancy. H3, which is wired. Um, I've seen a complaint from a few people. I think this is in the dock as well, that the wired headset has too short of a cable which is, you know, that That's can be annoying, valid. but you can also extend those. Yep. So it's not exactly the end of the world either. Um, and they're like very easy and very cheap and not cumbersome to expend as well, or extend as well, I will say that. It's kind of mind-blowing Sony didn't do it earlier, hey? Yeah, I think it's cool. I'm down with this. I don't think it's a bad thing. Apparently the monitor's really solid. I'm not surprised. I mean, it's like they know display technology. Yeah. They know audio technology. Yeah. Sony's one of those really funny companies to me where they have all this expertise and then just kind of decide not to use it it feels like you know I, yeah I, like I they're know. actually they're actually surprisingly limited in the in the space of well less now uh but they have been limited in the in the space of products that they actually do make um and they used to have like stores they used to have dedicated stores i don't know if they still do that like the just kind of different approaches to things um but yeah, people are reviewing things so far fairly positively. Um, Sondergaard thought the headsets were solid, but too short of a cable. Yeah, yeah, not surprised. Um, Ploof likes Bob the Saget M9. I'm for my username. Nice, do it. No, you <laughs> should just make it like away. Linus and be like, hey, it's me. Oh. What are you doing? You want me to do that? I, th I think so. I, I, well, I, wanted to, I wanted to tell them that I like, I, I wanted to ask them what I won. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I was just going for like straight confrontation. Oh, you want a confrontation? Well, I don't know. But why don't we pull float plane? Okay. Okay. All right. If you guys want to participate in the poll, you better sign up for float plane really fast. You're not going to have time. Extremely quickly. You should sign up for float plane. We've had so many amazing behind the scenes over there. Don't don't take my word for it. Float plane subscriptions have been going stonks oh, yeah. lately oh, yeah. just because of the awesome content that the social team has been putting up there. It's It's been kind of amazing. Great job, guys. Mm. We'll We've got another topic that I can do in the meantime. The week of SSD shenanigans featuring the M2 13-inch MacBook Pro and the Steam Deck. Early reviews of the M2 13-inch MacBook Pro have shown the SSD in the base model is half the speed for reads and 30% slower for writes than the same laptop with an M1. This appears to be due to the M2 version having a single 256 gigabyte NAND flash module instead of two 128 gig ones. The latter config can enable reading and writing in parallel across both chips, increasing performance. Unfortunately, the slow SSD also appears to act as a bottleneck thanks to Apple Silicon's unified memory. So the base 8 gig M.2 model can take close to twice as long to complete certain intensive tasks compared to the same laptop with 16 gigs of RAM. This is the kind of thing that just like Apple has no excuse for. Like they shamelessly just charge a lot, which is fine, but then they should just build a lot. Like it should just be good. Yeah. Meanwhile, Valve also stealthily downgraded the SSD in new Steam Deck models, lowering bandwidth from PCIe Gen 3 by 4 to by 2. Valve says there is no impact on performance, but that still sucks, Valve. You should still have said something because people rely on independent reviews to get an idea of how a product is it can be expected to perform in the real world. And you, you went, you participated in that ecosystem. You, you seeded review units. So now to maintain your transparency, you, you have to talk about how the new ones aren't going, that, how that wasn't representative of what you've actually delivered. Now, I believe you that there's no impact on performance because, I mean, I've seen games launch off of a flipping micro SD card without there being a big impact on performance. So yeah, Gen 3 by 2 is still flipping a lot more bandwidth than a micro SD card, but it still sucks. Also, also, deck, a deck designer said, uh, Lawrence, Lawrence Yang, I think. Uh, hold on, why don't I just click the thing? 
Yeah, Lawrence Yang. Uh, deck designer said, please do not do this in response to a mod that was posted replacing the deck's 2230 sized SSD with a larger 2242 sized drive as it apparently affects the cooling situation. The original modder apparently agrees, which I think is pretty funny. That is. Mod at your own risk. I am taking risk and working on this as a proof of concept. That's really funny. Uh, I mean, yeah, fair enough. It's worth noting that Lawrence did not say not to cut a hole in the back of your Steam Deck and bolt a cooler to the back of it. <laughs> yeah. Still going ahead. Who's the Steam Deck modder king now? <laughs> By the way, the poll ended 43-57. Uh, 43%, uh, 57% in favor of direct. But I will say you probably have a higher chance of them responding if you don't go direct. Yeah, so. I'm going to go not. Well, wait. So what, what did they vote for? Direct. Okay. Well, we have to do what Floatplane says. I mean, they do like pay your salary. Okay. So in that regard. Okay. So I'm going to add a picture, allow access. To I would call them. All photos. Call them. Yeah. Okay. So here, hold on. I'm going to take a quick picture. Wait, what? How does this? This is so stupid. What is this interface? Does this not look like I should be here? I click the camera. Does this not look like I should be able to take a picture? Well, he does. Why? Why am I not? Hello? <laughs> I I don't understand. Why are computers hard to start use? Start fake and then go direct. What are computers? That is that is the standard. The standard is to start fake and then go direct. Start fake and then go direct. Well, yeah, but I'm not going to be able to. I mean, if if it's the username, right? Like, here, let's just. They're not going to respond. Yeah. So, I mean. So then make it fake. Okay, so Bob Saget then? Yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah. Okay. A bunch of people tried to... Dude, we should do that more often. I've still got my own profile picture, though. A and bunch of people tried to beat the race. An error occurred. And they signed up for Floatplane, but they didn't make it in time for the poll. Oh, seriously? <laughs> I told you guys. <laughs> I mean, you should sign up anyway. Is is Bob Saget a blocked name? Like, Or does uh, someone else already have it? Bob. Oh, no, that shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter. Lots of people have the same name. Ma Bob McBoberson. This shouldn't be so hard. An error occurred. Please try it. What error? By signing up, you agree to the terms of cert. What? I Do I have to put my real name? Is it going to, like, does it have some way of checking? Is it checking my phone to see if it's my real name? An error occurred. Please try it. Way to go, Telegram. Okay. For real though, maybe I'm an idiot. Did I do it wrong? You you try it. Floaty McFloat plane. I do like that. Uh, in the meantime, let's talk about, from a Google engineer's perspective, <laughs> why G Suite versus the non-business, non-paid, free versions of Google services don't work the same. Uh, we're not, I think this person's anonymous, so I'm not gonna name them, but everything they said sounded sounded pretty reasonable. I will start by saying, I will give you reason. I don't think it's a good excuse, but it should at least give you some insight. I'm a software engineer working on, I'm not going to say exactly what they work on, within the workspace organization, and I'm a primary privacy advocate for some product. So I have firsthand experience as to why it is so dumb. <laughs> the primary reason that business versus non-business accounts can't share data is due to the differences in our privacy policy between these accounts. A business account cannot have any of its data used for ads or product development and cannot have any of its data used for machine learning models that aren't specific to that account. Fair enough. Video suggestions is a good example of an account-specific model where each account has a model that is trained for that account's suggestions, but for consumer accounts, everyone's data feeds into a single model. Fair enough. The reason this causes problems with sharing data between consumer accounts and business accounts comes down to laziness, <laughs> lack of effort. If a consumer account, for example, asks for Google Assistant to do something, the logs and events are used to further train the assistant models. If they ask to do something and the device you're interacting with is owned by a business account, we have to take special precautions not to use that specific data for the models. Since even the name of the device is considered personally identifiable information, and that chunk of audio can't be used in models, oh, that chunk of audio can't be used in models because our systems are so large and complex. 
And due to the way success is measured for projects, doing the necessary work to filter that data is an afterthought and not typically worth the effort in some engineers' minds. I disagree with this approach. Uh, Google takes in these cases uh, with the approach Google takes in these cases, but do appreciate that we take users' um, data privacy seriously within workspace. And I can't speak for ads or any other org. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good disclaimer right there. I just wish we followed through better, and I'm constantly filing bugs internally and advocating for these same things that you rant about. It's just a lot of people to convince and a lot of money at stake. So yes, that is an explanation, but it's. Yeah, it's 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 an ex yeah, it's a bad excuse and it sucks because I am a paying freaking customer and it doesn't make sense that my G Suite account should have limited functionality compared to a flippin' ad supported free account. What is this? Uh oh my god. Well, Apparently, we're supposed to build someone. Build someone? A six-figure computer. Nice. Okay. I'm not going to reveal anything other than that. So you guys will... You figured it out. What did you do? I don't know. Oh. Did you just keep doing the same things and it just eventually worked or what? Uh, I exited out of what you had been doing. And then I needed the phone number and I didn't want to bother you. So I just called myself, got the phone number, put the phone number in, and then it just like worked. I don't know. Okay. Oh, it does not have access to your contacts. Okay. For crying out loud. Let's just, let's go. Let's go. Uh, okay. I, I don't actually have any of those up anymore. Do you have any of those up anymore? Uh, Brad? no. No. Uh, okay. Well, it shouldn't be that hard to find. Oh, no, never mind. I've got one. Which, which one did, was it at the Linus Tech? Was that the one that we wanted to do? Uh, it was a Telegram Linus Tech Tips official. I think it was it. Is that is that right? I think so. Can anyone can anyone remember chat? What's up? Who are we? How do I even? Oh, okay, cool. So you can just search. I don't I don't use Telegram much, but so you can just search for an at. There's at least a couple. I searched for at the Linus Tech, and there's at the Linus Tech Tips and at the Linus Tech. Uh, at the Linus Tech appears to be one of the ones that just posted so let's uh wait oh, oh crap i searched for the wrong one there we go uh okay at the linus tech dang, dang it i feel like a boomer right now at the linus tech oh that is the one no messages here yet okay um so i'll go with uh hi i saw i won a prize I'm very excited. How can I get the Should prize? I spell it price? <laughs> nice. Should I spell it? I like it. I like it. No, I'm I'm going to spell it right. I'm going to spell it right. Okay. How do I how do I can I just like call someone? I can, do I have to have them as a Oh, oh, I can call them. Should I call them? Sure. Okay. All right. I'm I'm going to call them. I'll call them. Okay, Telegram would like access to your microphone. Okay, here we go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. They hang up. Oh, what? Oh, man, they canceled the call. Oh. What if they like no? <laughs> <laughs> How do I um get you my my information? Okay, well, oh, last seen eight hours ago. That makes sense. Probably in a <clears throat> different time zone. Well, we could try one of the other ones. I mean, there's plenty of there's plenty of Linus Tech Tipses apparently. There's here. definitely more. I can hunt for more of them. Do you want to do some some merch messages? Yeah, sure. I'm gonna. Tr oh man, I'm seriously? hunting. Linus Tech. Oh, here's Linus. Tech oh, you're Tips just like one. searching for them. Yeah. <laughs> I saw. Okay. I want a prize. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, hold up. Okay, come on, Siri, help me out. Oh crap. Crap, Siri, help me out. It now says, blah. <laughs> I didn't even know I entered the contest. Period. What did I win? Question mark. Oh, let's add, an let's add another question mark. Let's add three. <laughs> okay. Last seen yesterday. Apparently, this is Edwin. Not trying to be very convincing here. <laughs> okay, 
Oh man, this is such a bummer. I was little did you know Ed Zoll's just been like working on the side. Yeah, it's <laughs> our literally Ed. It's like my alter ego Ed Win. <laughs> this is the version of me that wins all the time. Get it, Ed? But win like prizes. Ha! <laughs> okay. Uh, sure. Why don't you hit me with some rich messages, Bell? To confirm, did you finish all your thoughts on the Google account types? Uh, yeah, that was it. It's stupid. I hate it. But thank you for the explanation. But like, yeah, Appreciate it makes your sense. Honesty. That's sort of, yeah, you come to that conclusion. But just big company doing big company things. Yeah, that suck. Speaking of big company, Tim asks, with GPU prices dropping, is it a good time to get into VR gaming? Are there any headsets you would recommend? Yes. And I know it's Facebook, but like, Get a Quest 2. Sorry. Man, it, nothing else touches that value per dollar. When, when did that come out? Quest 2? A couple of years ago. Yeah. Is there Quest 2 rumors? Quest 3, you mean? That's what I meant. Sorry. Um, I think so. They have been showing off a ton of headsets from AR to professional ones. Yeah. To, yeah. Uh, Quest 2. I, I was going to say, like, it might actually not be the greatest time. You might want to wait until the next next step comes out. Yeah, but it's also like $300. Like you're, it's not, we're not ta- it's not like it used to be where you were spending a thousand dollars. Three hundred dollars is still a lot of money. I, I know, but the depreciation is not going to be what it was. You'll, st- it'll still be worth something. Like if you were buying a first gen headset and you were spending like six, seven, eight hundred US dollars, only to have it immediately be worth half as much. Yeah, that is terrible. Whereas if you buy something for three hundred dollars and something better comes out, but that three hundred dollar thing is only going to depreciate by at worst, maybe a quarter. Like it'll still be worth something used. It's standalone. It depends like, how much. Like it's just not going to hurt you as much. Extra cash you have going into a recession. And a used Quest Two is still going to be the low bar for entry into VR. They're not going to undercut it. I mean, oh honestly, I guess it's possible. There's, there's no way though. There's no way they undercut it. So I just don't see it as nearly a as I don't see it as as high a risk of maneuver as it used to be. I was trying to read this article about like Quest 3 release dates and I landed on pcgamesn.com and it is just ads. <laughs> <laughs> There's this like four lines of text and then, yeah, no, that's actually chopped off. There is four lines of text that are not obscured by ads. I mean, technically this banner up here is not an ad. Uh, okay. That's not technically sure. an ad. Sure. And technically this except for once you get to free games <laughs> I, where did my mouse even go there it is i need to get out of here i love it if you don't want to give facebook your information they do sell a uh, enterprise one for like 500 dollars more that doesn't require a meta account but uh i think you lose the value at that point yeah i'm sure they definitely definitely really? aren't monitoring i didn't know you, you could do that yep that's a thing huh uh, Anonymous asked about Labs. Any updates on if it's going to be getting its own channel or when it'll be producing more content now that we've had uh, a lot more hires and people are out of uh, probation now? There will almost certainly be Lab channels, but they won't be the priority at the start. The priority is get data. And then we will find ways to present that data probably in a text form first and also through videos on our other channels like Short Circuit and LTT. And from there, eventually, I would expect Labs to branch out into its own video content because video is just, it's the only way to make that kind of an enterprise profitable. You can't, you can't do it through text. From RC, are any of you guys into space science? Any updates on the, or any thoughts on the Voyager probes powered down and being updated with Windows 98 in 2022. Oh, it's the Mars probe that got the Windows 98 update. That's super cool. It's actually awesome. <laughs> 24 years later, I absolutely love it. It's it's really really cool seeing like cuz you, you know there's got to be an insane engineering effort that goes into something that like you're going to fire in a tube to a different planet and then hope it still works on the other end. Yeah. Like, you know there's going to be this insane effort. So then to be able to see these things work 
wildly beyond the expected lifespan yeah. is just really awesome. I don't know. That's very, very cool. I've been reading about the Voyager probes and their impending shutdown. And I, I didn't even realize, for example, that they powered down the cameras on them ages ago, that this whole process of slowly shutting down their systems in order to extend their lifetime has actually been ongoing since very early in the mission. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool stuff. Yeah, really interesting. Oops. Someone asked, what's the yeah. best and worst thing about the house so far? I accidentally just yoed it into the abyss. Best thing is having more space and the theater room. Worst thing is basically nothing being in its final state. So every time you pick something up, the place you put it down is not its final resting place because you don't have your furniture. You don't know where, yeah. uh, there's still like contractors crap lying around in places you where you'd the like paper to put on things. The floors? Uh, only in a few places there's still some ram board on the floors that like the the storage room is full of painting equipment from the painters so we can't put anything away so the living room is still a sea of clutter it's just we're not moved in properly yet and it sucks and i want to be moved in but obviously champagne problem i'm i'm, I'm loving the additional space uh, we can't go in the backyard because it's all completely dug up it's a disaster there's a apparently some kind of concrete mixing mixers strike so you can't get concrete um so they can't shoot the pool so we probably won't swim in it this year which again champagne problem but you know it's disappointing for the kids right that sucks i'm disappointed the big kids are disappointed too i'm disappointed i was gonna yeah. go swim in it yeah heck yeah from dave any thoughts on AMD using multiple dyes or chiplets on the next gen GPUs? Oh, it's super exciting. I mean, we saw what they did with chiplets with Zen. That we, seems to be the direction. We saw what For Apple everything. Apple did bolting together two of yeah. their M1 chips to make a GPU that was built and then fused together. I don't think I, I, I didn't think it could be done with complete transparency to the application and to the end user like that. If AMD can pull off something similar, we could see a legitimate huge improvement in GPU performance. Yeah. Heck yeah. From Diego, what Android phone would you pick if you couldn't pick a Samsung? Is it crazy to have high hopes for the nothing phone? The nothing one or whatever it's called? Phone one? I know nothing about it. Haha, <laughs> got him. Hey. So, I mean, I we know. know that OnePlus turned worse when Carl Pei left. We know that Carl Pei left over creative and management disagreements with the existing OnePlus team. We know that Carl Pei is in charge of this team. Maybe that helps. Wasn't there some negative afterthoughts about the headphones i yeah, i don't think the headphones have been a smash hit i think yeah. they've done like okay nothing special hey yeah that's when they discount it the nothing special ah wait is that actually a thing no, okay I that'd be know. pretty great actually if they did that i don't know yeah uh, yeah a lot of people in the in the chat talking about pixels a lot of pixels people talking about sony phones very frustrating my issue with sony phones is a super trivial one but i cannot get over it they do not allow you to reposition the back and the task switcher button sony just do it it's 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 in like basic android you you took it out put it back in do they have their small phones still yeah, they have some pretty compact ones, like Skinny. They're skinnier, which is really nice. Yeah, they... I would love to daily drive a Sony phone, but I refuse to reach all the way across my screen for the back button. Yeah, that's really I'm weird. not doing it. From Michael, any plans to start selling coffee mugs? Yeah. Matter of time. <laughs> I'm amazed we haven't done it yet. It's, it's kind of stupid. <laughs> I'm I'm yeah, I'm pretty surprised it hasn't happened. I don't know. Question for Luke from Anon. Do you have any advice running a software development or engineering org that's mostly or fully remote? Uh, Try to find people who are in the same time zone as you. <laughs> yeah, time zones are more difficult than you might suspect. Um, and if you're going to have someone that's, uh, yeah, let's let's make it more about time zones because this is a topic that could go on for hours. So we'll just talk about one, one section of it. Um, but time zones are tough. Uh, if you're going to have someone who's going to be in a drastically different time zone, 
uh, you're going to need to have the right type of person that can work in that drastically different time. So they need to, they're going to need to be quite motivated on their own. Um, and the team is going to need to be ready to work with them and they are go- going to need to be ready to work with the team. And what I mean by that is both sides need to be, uh, good actors. Like if, if, if they need to schedule a meeting, if you need to work with someone, cause a lot of times you don't to be completely honest. Uh, but if you do need to work with someone directly, um, both sides are going to need to play ball and play ball in a nice way to try to make it so that you're working around each other as best as possible. Uh, if someone has to have a really bad sleep schedule one night, maybe you trade off next time. Um, just have that just give and take act in good faith, have give and take all that type of stuff. Um, yeah, I'll focus on just the time zones part. I wouldn't worry too much about like plus or minus almost like five, but once you start going beyond that, it gets pretty pretty rough. Um, and pick a time and try to be very logical about it for your meetings. And then if it's and and then tell people in the interviewing process that are remote what that meeting time is, because if they're just like, oh, that just like won't work with my my sleeping schedule or whatever, well then. Guess it won't work. Guess See you later. it won't work. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I could go on for way too long, so I'll just keep it to that. Question from Josiah. Linus and Luke, what do you think of used server hardware as a home server or NAS? Is it a good idea or do you have any input? I have more things up, but you can't see them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. You won't get the same kind of power efficiency that you would out of modern hardware, but what you will get is ample access to mountains, mountains of discarded hardware from enterprise companies that it still works and was built to a level of quality where it was it, it was intended to function for longer than they ever intended to use it. Your, your problem that you might run into is motherboards. Yeah, um, I wouldn't buy hard drives. <laughs> Yeah, hard drives would be a little sketch. Motherboards would be a little sketch. But like CPUs are... Well, you're stuck with used motherboards if you're going to buy used CPUs. So No, I, I know. I'm, I'm just talking about resiliency, though. Like oh, your, sure. your CPU is almost guaranteed to just make it. But there will be mountains of other motherboards. So yeah. go for it. Yeah. And you'll save so much that, yeah, some stuff will die. And then you will go and you'll replace it. And you might even learn something while you do it. And you'll still be out ahead in all likelihood. Uh, Dylan didn't get the memo about sending merch messages by uh, buying something on LTT store instead of sending super chats and sent $20 as a super chat. Please don't do that anymore. I uh, have always wondered this. Why does LMG do a probation that prohibits uh, video use and I'm assuming other things within LMG? So the reason is that we don't want to create, it's not video use, it's uh, credits, like public public facing appearances. And the reason that we have a probation is that in BC, there is a 90-day period where either the employer or the employee can just say, this isn't working out. I'm glad we tried, but I think it's time to part ways. And as long as there isn't a committed relationship of any sort, it doesn't make sense for us to have people in public-facing roles where all of a sudden it's going to create a bunch of questions about why they departed. It's just easier if we just make sure that someone's a good fit and that they're going to be here for the long term before we introduce them to the audience. It just has a lot of potential to create drama that is entirely unnecessary. We've we've been burned by not adhering to the policy in the past, and we are certainly never going to be making any exceptions to it in the future ever again. There you go. That's it for merch messages. And that's it for the show. Thank you for tuning into The WAN Show. We will see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye! The show is brought to you by Reloptics, Squarespace, and Secret Lab. Oops. I, uh, boop. Hello? How do I... Can I stop it still? Is this... Oh, I got it. No, no, I want to do it. I want to do it! You're moving my stuff! Wait, it's... Oh, it's just... The range is just bad.